Wordsworth, Coleridge, Wainwright, all people who've spread the word about the spectacular natural beauty of the Lake District. But I'm on the trail of two men who, while not as well known, have arguably had just as big an impact in putting this wonderful place firmly on the map. They're also great pioneers in a sport which is a massive part of my life, climbing. They've left us with a unique historical record, and I'm going to show you how they did it. Meet George and Ashley Abraham, risking life and limb on the rocks of the lakes, two pioneer climbers when the sport was in its infancy. The Lake District was their backyard, and wherever they went, they took their trusty plate camera with them. They were actually rather fearless in the way that astronauts are fearless, I think. And um, there was only one occasion on which my grandfather was frightened. That was when he climbed up a large slab of rock in sky. And when he got to the top of it, the whole thing disintegrated and fell away from underneath him just as he got to safety. They didn't suffer from fear like mortals like I. <laughs> <laughs> Until now, their photographic collection from the 19th and early 20th century has been scattered to the four winds. Sue has brought it back together. The two brothers were excellent friends and in climbing, their lives literally did depend upon each other. This is my grandfather giving his brother a shoulder, and they were dependent on each other in that they worked together in the business for many decades, and they remained the most excellent friends. Sue used to come and visit her grandfather every summer, and was picked up from the station in one of the few cars in Cumbria at the time. We were subjected to some very wild driving. We used to be sick four times on the way back. And he was throwing the car around like Mr Toad. Well, he was a very daring, impetuous sort of driver. And of course, when they first got a car, there were only three others in Cumbria. So uh, they used to toot the horn rather arrogantly. Why do you think that people still keep coming back to these photos and, and are so passionate about them? Well, the climbers like the climbing photographs because they recognize the places and they know how hard the climbing was to do. And people who prefer the lyrical lakeside scenes are the same sort of people who like the lyrical lakeside scenes 100 years ago. Oh, this really is like a little museum, isn't it? Yep, we've got boots, rope, and camera. Fantastic. These must be the legendary hobnail boots. Well, these are not the very oldest boots. They would have belonged to my grandfather in the 1940s and 50s. And you can imagine how you would hate to climb rock with those nails under your feet today. I'm just thinking, even completely dry, not sodden wet, they're incredibly heavy. The thought of carrying something as unwieldy and as fragile as, as this here, yes. up a mountain, is exactly. just incredible. Yeah. And what happened apparently was that when the person came out from under the black cloth, he was a little bit disorientated and sometimes took a step in the wrong direction and fell off, uh, coming out from the darkness into the light. But as they were roped at the time, he just dangled for a bit and then was pulled up by his brother. But it did happen that they fell off when taking pictures. Yeah. Wow. The old photographic studio in Keswick is now an outdoor shop. Shirley remembers playing here as a child. Now this staircase here looks quite old to me. Was, was that there when you were a kid? Well, yes, it was. It was uh, as I, it went up to the dark room, very dark, with a, a thick curtain at the top. It was quite intimidating to, to go up there. As you went in, there were trays with photographs sort of appearing in, in the developing trays. And, as, as a child, that must have seemed like the most magical, it, mystical, it was but magical. Slightly, yes. slightly scary yes. place as well. He used to sometimes give us uh, light, sensitive paper. You could lay it in a press with leaves and flowers and put it out in the sunlight and leave it for a little bit, and, and then you got an image. I love the ones of Grasmere. And the views actually from Castlehead, I think, are some of their best, of looking up the lake into what they always called the jaws of Borrowdale with stable hills below. This is absolutely magnificent. Of course, nowadays with modern technology, even a perfect view like this can be, well, played around with with computer technology to make it better. But Ashley and George, they were playing tricks with their cameras long before we ever thought of it. 
they believed that it was perfectly legitimate to compose a picture and certainly my aunt used to be made to hold up foxgloves which came into the side of the picture and gave a sort of delicate look and they also used to chase the cattle into the lake and the little <laughs> girls were hired to, to chase these uh, stunt cows beasts, yes stunt cows <laughs> chase them into the water somewhere up there in the mist is great gable home of one of the brothers most iconic climbing photographs Napes and Needle. As a tribute to the brothers, I'm going to recreate a bit of Lake District history. I've enlisted the help of the Fell and Rock Climbing Club, which Ashley and George helped set up. Today's members have abandoned their high-tech climbing gear for something a bit more authentic. How does it feel in comparison to modern equipment? It feels quite comfortable, slightly sort of prickly on the legs and uh, with the harris and, uh, and the hats. Not sure whether the hats would stay on in the wind. Looking back at some of the routes oh, that they were doing, they're, they're still routes that people would climb today and oh, be tested on. Very much so. And the climbs they were doing, they were, they were the forefront of climbing in those days, and they were climbing in the lakes in Wales, in Scotland, in the Alps, all over the place, and very prolific climbers. Unfortunately, I had a serious climbing accident two months ago, so I can't join the boys. I'm watching their progress from Wasdale Head. In the 1920s, the brothers came round the other side of the camera to star in this film. Let's hope Ron and the boys can make it look as easy. On the top, yeah, just a bit very misty up here. Can't see very much. How did it feel climbing in the tweeds? Well, that's good, nice and warm. I feel a bit wobbly up here, really, but uh, not so bad. Okay, well, listen, Ron, you get yourself down safely, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you back in the pub for a pint later on. Yeah, sounds fantastic. That sounds a good idea. And uh, see you later. All the best. Well, the boys managed it. An iconic piece of climbing history recreated. I tell you, seeing the guys climbing in their tweeds in this incredible evocative place, it really feels genuinely like they've been transported back in time and I reckon it just must have been an extraordinary experience to have been around back in the time of the Abrahams when climbing was really being born. But one thing I know for sure is that I'm definitely coming back when I'm healthy and I'm going to get up that needle because that is one fantastic piece of rock.